Greetings and salutation. This is Emperor Vespasian and his trusty sidekick. Hello. This is a video on our Japanese mortar teams. We have quite a lot of Japanese mortar teams. Uh, they're light mortars, not medium mortars. Uh, these are, you may well have heard of them as knee mortars because for some reason they were called knee mortars by the British apparently the story goes and soldiers would try and fire them on their knee and break their knee which is a fallacy because the British also had the same mortar but who cares um, you get lots of things in history where people say yay look this is true look this happened and actually it turns out it's a lie it didn't happen uh, just like the uh, Singapore couldn't be defended because the huge naval guns had been built to fire only out to sea really? You know what engineers do when they've got nothing to do and the Japanese are coming? They pick the naval guns up and turn them out to face the land, which is what they did. They fired the big naval guns and they did absolutely nothing because they only had down piercing shells. That's the story. But the story goes that the guns face the wrong way. Anyway, these are knee mortars. We've got quite a few little knee mortars for our Japanese army. Um, primarily because we have Japanese infantry. Uh, Japanese naval assault troops and Japanese power troops so we have different we have mortars two, two mortars for, what, for one specific type of unit yeah basically um, so this is the type 89 grenade, uh, grenade oh, sorry mortar in actual fact it's a grenade launcher not a mortar grenade launcher. Uh, the shells fired by the, the the grenades fired by the mortar were normal hand grenades and they could also be fired from rifles as well so this is just life um, normally uh, a platoon would be made up of three infantry sections of 50 men each and one support platoon which would be uh, sorry one support section of three mortars of yeah three mortars and what the Japanese would generally do is they would not have the mortars as a separate unit they would only form into a separate unit when they were going to do an assault or something so they could ma maximize firepower and they would swap out one of the machine gun teams for the mortar to give the actual assault and infantry a grenade launcher capability and all the machine guns would be put together in one unit and used as mass fire to fire into the air down on the enemy um, targets. It, it, it's complicated. Um, typically, if the way anyone play Call of Duty, then you probably know what he's talking about. I don't know. Uh, yeah, probably. Anyway, so what would generally happen is um, the the Japanese use um, infantry assault as a basic tactic. You know what most armies did. Uh, but the Japanese did banzai charges, which is basically a suicide charge against the enemy. And what they would do is they would fire mortars. At the enemy, these grenade launchers, they're only very short range, and they were firing machine guns at the enemy. And the machine guns would make the enemy keep their head down so they weren't shooting back at the Japanese as they charged. And the mortars would land and blow up the men who were laid on the floor with their heads down, indirect fire type of thing. And that's what the mortars were used for, that, that, that's how they were deployed. Um, which is why bonsai attacks could be very, very devastating because you've got. If you put your head up, you get hit, and if you put if if you lay down, you you have mortars landed on you, you have grenades landed on your head. Um, so it, it is quite an imp a useful tactic that the Japanese use and quite devastating. I'd rather get hit than getting blown up to bits. Yeah, well, because mortars give us shrapnel, and I don't, I would not like shrapnel anywhere near me. Um, a shrapnel or machine gun bullet, take your pick. Or a rifle bullet. Yeah, a rifle bullet. Um, yeah, so uh, the Japanese like the knee mortar better than the firing the grenade from a rifle because the grenade from the rifle would make more noise. Um, so you couldn't tell where the mortar was coming from. Japanese rifles were designed to not. Uh, never mind. Uh, that's another. That's another video. Doesn't matter. Um, so th th they like these mortars, and they they would generally fire these mortars as the machine guns fired. The infantry would charge forwards. And by the time, and, and, and because they were so close up to the infantry, they were used by the infantry, uh, they could keep the fire up on the enemy target, on the enemy trench or whatever, right to the point where the actual infantry had got into the trench and started bayoneting people and, and fighting in close combat. So it was very, very, uh, very useful thing. It's the reason they conquered most of China, 
or the important bits of China. It's the reason they defeated the British. It's the reason they defeated the Americans. It's it's just a basic Japanese tactic that we just were not we as 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 Western armies were just not ready for. It just took us completely by surprise, and we were not trained to deal with that sort of firepower. Yeah, because in the beginning of World War Two, all Japanese soldiers were met veteran because we're all trained. Pretty much, yeah. Um, well, they, it, not just that; that they've been most of them had fought in China for years, so they really were veteran troops. So the British had, hadn't actually fought any battles for a long time. You had some senior officers who had been in the First World War. But most of the actual men were not First World War veterans. They were new, young men, freshly into fighting Japanese. And then they hit these extremely well-trained, extremely well-organized Japanese soldiers. And they just crumbled and, and lost. Um, so, yeah. So, the Type 89 was a standard grenade launcher. They, they used other types of grenade. Uh, they, they used several other types. But this was the main one they used. Um, as with all Japanese units, they're classed as fanatics, so they're hard to kill. So fanatics are really bad to fight against, aren't they? Yeah, you have to kill every single one. Yeah, you have to literally kill them all. Um, they don't run off. Uh, as far as night fighting rules go, um, muzzle flare, I'll go into this in the infantry one more, more detail, but typically uh, the night fighting rules for bolt action, it's a PDF, you can download it. Um, has things about muzzle flashes and stuff. Um, we don't allow muzzle flashes and stuff for the Japanese because the the, the weapons were designed to be used at night. Uh, the, the, there were sound suppressants and stuff on, on uh, uh, subsonic bullets. Um, so generally, we give that rule to all Japanese units because that's how the Japanese prefer, prefer, prefer to fight. Um, so that that's something I'll go into in more detail in the infantry videos. Um, but this is just basically the Japanese need more. So you get um, five of these in the box, or six, five or six of these in the box when you put all of the Japanese box. Um, so you can make up as many as you like. Um, we've made two for each section. Yep. Generally. Um, we're hoping to have the Japanese army brought up to full strength and have it on platoons, which is three sections per platoon, which would have a full multi platoon, which I've already explained how that works. So, yeah, so questions? No, no questions, but I've got tactics. You've got tactics, go for it. Right, my tactic for these is to keep them with a high experienced unit so they don't get harmed that much as a spot. Um, I mean, they absorb the attacks. And then use the mortar to pinpoint where the enemy are. That's not a bad tactic. Um, we do permit the mortars, within 12 inches we allow the mortars to be used as basically grenade throwers. Um, so they don't roll the 6 to hit, because that's what they were, they were grenade throwers. Um, bolt action doesn't actually have any rules for grenades particularly. It just says men have grenades, deal with it. Um, there's no actual rules for them. Um, uh, but we do allow within 12 inches you can actually not bother rolling the six to hit. No, no mortars, usually when a mortar, if, if you don't play for bolt action, a uh, mortar is an indirect fire weapon, and indirect fire weapons you need a six to hit for the first turn, and then a five to hit for the second turn. If it's the same target. target. If it's the same target, and the target hasn't moved. So, you basically minus one off your roll every time you roll, until finally you, you're hitting it for definite. Just, uh, no, because the lowest you can get is two. Yeah, so, and, and then once you've hit it, you can keep hitting the same unit again and again. So that makes weapons that fire in direct very good against defensive troops. But once you hit once, there's no need to hit again. Yeah. The pins just make them not move ever again. Yep, you just start adding those pins on them. If you can start pinning a unit in bolt action, that unit is dead. Oh yeah, if you do hit them when it's six, then it goes automatically always hit. Always yeah. hit. Always hit. Unless you roll one. Which is Unless you roll one, which is... Good. Yeah. Uh, you've had some pretty good luck with mortars, haven't you, in bolt action? Yep. Um, the Polish game I did. Yeah. Um, I was very lucky. I was on sixes, roll six, got your entire unit pinned down yep. and destroyed. Yep. You actually destroyed my huge 19-man Polish uh, squads I do believe that, mortars. that squad never moved the entire game. No, you killed it. You, yeah. Each turn you just kept putting the mortar around on it. It was an inexperienced unit, so that was a waste of 19 men. Before that, I bombed it. 
Yes. I'm going to play things, and then I use my Malta. I ain't hit, so maybe. So, um, quick. That's basically the same tactic I use as what I would use as well. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I, I would like to get them into into close fighting if I was using the Japanese. I don't normally play Japanese. I normally fight against them, so I know what to do about the Japanese when they're attacking. You've never played Japanese before. I have played Japanese, but not much. You, you, as soon as you realised how awesome the Japanese were, you just said, no more playing Chinese, I'd now play Japanese, and that was it. You just yeah, Japanese. took the army off me and said it was yours, which is funny, because, you know, I thought, I, want, I wanted this army. Um, it's mine now. So we have mortars for the Japanese infantry. These are just normal IJ infantry um, in the khaki, in the yellow khaki. Uh, then we have the... Assault troops, these are special naval landing forces. And then we have the uh, mortars for the paratroopers, which is here. I'll just move him out of the way. That's the paratroop mortar. Um, so we've, we've got a bit of everything for everyone. Um, we only have three types of infantry anyway, which is the paratroopers, the special naval landing forces, and the normal infantry. Um, if you're playing Japanese, chances are you're not doing early war, you're going to be doing late war, in which case you won't get the Japanese paratroopers because they were early war troops. By, by the time the Americans were heavily involved in the island hopping campaign, well, they didn't fight Jap paratroopers anyway, and, uh, and they, they, they've gone back to using khaki. Uh, typically, these overalls, they, they're actually coveralls over the khaki, they've got khaki underneath. So... That's the difference. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, um, have I missed anything? Uh, points wise, um, they're not that expensive. They're certainly cheaper than normal mortars. Uh, they don't do as much damage as a mortar. Uh, they only do D three he, whereas an actual mortar will do D six he and I think plus two pins. And barely not hitting all. Yeah. Is it plus two pins or D3 pins? I can't remember. D3. D3 pins, which is, that's pretty effective. Uh, this only gives you an extra plus one pin because it's a, it's a bomb. Uh, it goes bang, so it gets an extra pin. And it does D3 damage. So if you get a squad of three of these, that's technically 90, uh, well, yeah, 90 damage you, you could possibly do with a guaranteed three. So that's pretty decent firepower for something that's very cheap. Um, not many Japanese units you can actually buy as inexperienced. Uh, most Japanese units are regular or veteran. Uh, but you can get an inexperienced one of these for 24 points. If you're using it as a mortar, I think get the inexperienced one because it's a lot cheaper. Yeah, I got that. I mean, you could buy a veteran unit for 46 points, but that's, that's expensive. That's, why, not, why, why not just get the cheap alternative? It doesn't make any difference if you're the one firing. And then you can spend more points on the other troops. That's just my idea. Like, who, they be, who will they be spotting? You could get inexperienced and give money to the troops that they, they will be spotting in the future. Yeah, so it, it might be best to spend your points on really cheap mortar teams, half the price, 24 points. Um, and then you get yourself a decent amount of firepower for very little cost, and then, as you said, put, 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 put points into your troops. Upgrade your infantry and make them um, special naval landing troops instead of normal infantry. I'll, 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 I'll do that in the future. Make your regular infantry veterans. Down. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it seems like a better waste of, a better, better spending of points. I don't know. Let, let us know your views on how you would buy them. Uh, Jap the Japanese army was extremely mortar heavy. They were big on mortars. Had a lot of mort a lot of these light mortars. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, so that's it. That's the end of the video. We've done tactics and everything. So yep. that's it. That's Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And over to you. So if you enjoyed the video, please see like and subscribe and comment down below what you think of the mortars and if you think that these paratrooper claws are so much cooler than the. Uh, American and British and all the other ones, of course. Uh, that's everything yeah, for me. That's the whole video. <laughs> that's everything from him. Goodbye and thank you for watching.